Hey, this is Steve Good on the Coin Chat with Yuri Cataldo and Alt Velsberg from the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications. It's like a big step. I had to go check what it was. Well, <laughs> Alt, welcome to the yes. show. <laughs> yes, I, it's a pleasure to be here. Tell us what you do in our audience. Right. Yeah, oh, perfect. perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so, hi, uh, I'm Velsberg. I'm the Chief Data Officer of Estonian Government. Um, I oversee data governance and data science um, from the government perspective. Uh, that includes areas such as um, AI, open data. Yeah. Uh, from the data governance side, when we are talking about data quality, and metadata, semantics, and so on. So it's it's really broad. Uh, sometimes also uh, different initiatives related to education. So um, last year started data science master's degree program yeah mm -hmm. um, authorization service giving people access to their own data so different bits throughout that relevant uh, for the government how, are yeah. how long have you been been working for the the Estonian government so um, I'm the first chief data officer and I started last year in August so okay I'm I'm getting to one year now, so mm -hmm. a short time, but still, uh, being in a public sector, it's been an interesting ride so far. Yeah, I bet. So you're you're yeah. only part of the uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications, right? Exactly. So exactly. do they have other data scientists or 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 similar types of roles looking at data across Estonian government? So uh, what we what we right now try to do is that we try to introduce these chief data officers in other ministries as well. Right. So I look at the government from uh, from centrally, but we actually don't have that many uh, this type of persons. Actually, don't have any of them uh, in other ministries. Uh, what we what we are closest to achieving is uh, introducing data stewards as a role in uh, different ministries and also in different uh, departments. Right. Um, but we hope uh, it's also under uh, our AI strategy and initiative that there should be uh, chief data officers also present. And uh, we can see that uh, there is a huge need for that, this role. So what what is the the overall strategy or, or goal that Estonia has when they're starting to look at data? Is it is it because of the shift? Is it because of the residency <laughs> program in particular, or is it as a national level concern? I mean, what's driving the need to kind of have a better understanding of data, data utility, or data use management? Yeah. Uh, so as you know, Estonia is quite digital, um, but we found out also that uh, regardless of our high level of uh, data and so on. We don't actually have that level of competence uh, throughout different ministries, departments. Um, also, sometimes we are not aware of the data we have actually collected. So our now strategy is to turn a statistics Estonia, so national statistics agency, to a data agency responsible for everything related to data. So they would take over the role of uh, governance. And we already passed a law in the end of uh, February. So the government gave them this uh, authority. Now we are in a transposition uh, whereby they should take a more leading role. And uh, we are at, um, at the moment uh, kind of focusing on uh, data description side. So understanding actually what data is collected. So metadata we are talking and also data quality, um, it's, 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 it's a problem. Uh, we have a missed data, but uh, this kind of a hygiene is not always there. Right. Mm -hmm. how, how much of um, what you guys are looking at in terms of data is also involving looking at blockchain and data privacy? So when we are looking at uh, blockchain, is not really kind of right now extremely relevant when we talk about data. Uh, where it comes uh, to existence is really about uh, when we give citizens access to their own data. 
So yeah. this is something that we have discussed. So how to um, have this kind of valid way to understand when someone has access to data, how data changes and so on. So this is the closest thing we have uh, considered and uh, too early to talk in kind of a definite manner, but uh, this is something. Sure. Well, it's more yeah. than I could say most countries are aware of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, as you know, in some uh, information systems, we already uh, use uh, blockchain or KIC as well. Right. Okay. Um, but, can can but, you talk about that? Something... I wasn't aware of that. So where are you using blockchain inside of Estonia? Um, so Estonia is uh, using mostly, as you know, we have uh, electronic signing and so on. So yeah. that's 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 the that's the main main focus right now. Yeah. From mm -hmm. the data side, uh, we are considering when uh, citizens uh, basically give authorization for some other private company to access their data. Yeah. So validate and also see how the data lifecycle. Oh, that's uh, very works. cool. No, I mean, I know that um, for some people that want to register companies in Estonia, they can pay with Bitcoin as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, um, that's already a, 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 a progression forward from, let's call it the mainstream, where you have to pay in local currency, at least you've got a global currency that you're, you're using. Interesting. Have you, are you, have you been in touch with any of the people within the Estonian government that have also talked about launching the Estcoin? I know that's been a topic of conversation that's been in the press often on. I'm just curious if that's something you've come across. Yeah, so the S-Coin, uh, I myself haven't been in talks with, with this particular aspect. Um, there are right now no plans to launch S-Coin. Um, what we have considered is the idea of giving uh, the citizens just a way of uh, kind of contributing their ideas where the government should invest so whether it be an s coin or something else yeah. uh, it's more of getting citizens to be more involved in uh, government decisions so if you, you want for that road to have an eight road highway then you can kind of chip in with your <laughs> the biggest, citizen. biggest highway on the planet <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly so you can do that or if you want to invest your kind of citizen coins or S coins, however we name them, then you can do that. And you would get them by being active, contributing back, uh, taking part, let's say, for, uh, through elections and so on. So mm -hmm. by being active citizen, you would amass those, uh, let's say, coins. But this is just, again, a ro really idea part. Yeah. Whether it's something like that will ever take place or happen, it's up to debate. Right now, we already do have this kind of a citizen involvement, but this happens in other parts of the world as well, whereby citizens can vote what are the most crucial aspects. Yeah, right. I think they call that survey monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it survey monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> so with the, because your Estonia is, is so digitized, how has that process been for, let's say, the average citizen? On because you're collecting so, much, uh, you gave a presentation at you know at Toronto AI about all the amazing things you guys are working on. But yeah. how have how has the rest of the citizens of Sonia been brought up to speed on that and educated on the fact that their data is being used for good versus like evil, in the broadest term? Yeah. Um, so. Our digital journey in that sense uh, didn't start right now. So it it started 20, almost 20 years ago, or even more. So mm -hmm. uh, back then uh, there was this kind of initiative called Tiger Jump and uh, um, we introduced the kind of uh, computing and how to use uh, computers to everyone from small villages to cities and so on. Um, so it's a longer way and it's a process. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. we, we try to be as transparent as possible about everything that happens. So we had, for example, ID crisis last year. So if that took place, again, being transparent, that's, that's, this, uh, that's the case. These are the kind of the possibilities that could go wrong and so on. 
So um, it's really about communicating. It's true that so many people are, uh, we are living in a digital sphere, but we, uh, we are becoming comfortable. Mm -hmm. We don't feel that the government itself is as digital as it is. And it sometimes, it feels more kind of, um, more innovative for outside than citizens here in Estonia. Like, I guess this is really true. <laughs> because everyone are kind of used to that. Mm -hmm. um, and we can see the same thing like uh, a few months ago uh, there was a piece in Wired talking about AI judge which really blew up internationally. In Estonia right. it didn't get any media presence at all. So it, it kind of gives this kind of the level people are like yeah that's, that's awesome that you are doing something like that or thinking about mm -hmm. something like that but no one really pays that much, much attention. Right. Or that much concern. Mm -hmm. So, what, what do you think the um, the plans are when it comes to AI, and how it would be applied or used in the context of, you know, a government implementation of a uh, of it as a tool? There's a lot of people out there, like you know, Elon Musk, for example, or Bill Gates, that would be have to be very careful how we apply and use AI because it could be damaging to us if you look at it from a wide perspective, but. I suppose from a light data management perspective or data using perspective, what, what is it that you are trying to achieve using AI? Yeah, um, so we, we always have told that we try to make the government, actually AI is just a technology. Um, our bigger idea is to make the government seamless, the service is proactive for the citizens. So that's, that's one of the aims we try to do with uh, AI. Uh, we already have um, this life event services uh, design uh, thinking and uh, the way services are made automatic. So I'm going to give an example. Um, mm -hmm. When a child is born, you no longer uh, would need to register them. Uh, you would get automatically a child benefit and so on. Um, they would re be registered to the kindergarten and so forth. Oh They're my God. actually behind. Wow many many different services but this example what i gave you here actually doesn't require any ai so in terms of ai machine learning we are actually thinking about things that are not so uh, kind of rule based so um i'm giving giving a random example so if if the government sees that uh, you're currently employed at this precise job and there is a 80% chance that uh, this company will go bankrupt. Should we tell the citizen or give a heads up? Or if we see that you're currently working uh, at, the, at the job that is like 100% in uh, 10 years time going to be obsolete, should we jump in and uh, provide you a kind of retraining or so on? So mm -hmm. we are thinking about this idea and uh, we are actually... Uh, really close to uh, finalizing this kind of uh, initial uh, four or five projects that we actually try to automate. And uh, hopefully within a few, few uh, weeks' time, we can be more sure about uh, which five or projects will be automated. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. that's just a rough, a rough idea. So to make the government really seamless. Um, the second, the second thing is uh, just related to our population. It's aging. Uh, we have less and less people in Estonia, so we, there's 1.3 million right now, and our industry output is actually one of the lowest in uh, in Europe. So we try to raise that one as well. And uh, the government role. Yeah. And just final, final thing. And sure. the government role is actually uh, to be kind of uh, paved the way basically mm -hmm. we see that uh, we are with Saudi Arabia and Arab Emirates and uh, Italy from Europe we are uh, the few countries that where public sector is actually thriving the uptake of AI yeah so what I was going to ask you was how much of sorry you're exhausted just real quick and then you jump in uh, I was going to ask so you're talking yeah. about like the the dwindling <laughs> economy or the the lower uh, you know the lower uh, population what what impact is the program have, having in terms of its 
global reach and its impact on the economy in terms of the positive influx of funds, for example, or creating new work? Yeah, uh, so I can, I can give you an example. I don't like to think about the future in a really theoretical uh, perspective. So really putting in context what has been done right now and how it affects. So if we think about the uh, unemployment rate, unemployment rate is extremely low, but we still have a problem that uh, after giving an unemployed person a recommendation, they will be like, 42% the chance that six months later they will be unemployed again. Whether they don't like the job, they don't fit the job, or there is something else. Right. Now, through profiling, giving a better recommendation, we can make sure that people find a precise or like uh, more likely the job that uh, they will actually enjoy. So they will be employed longer. It's more likely that the person enjoys the job and also the um, the firm itself gets an employee that fits that precise uh, position. So I, I really do believe that it, uh, in the end, reduces our unemployment rate even further. The, the kind of the out, potential output will be increased as you find the perfect match. So I think this is just something that we have to and need to continue. Uh, it has already shown great uh, uh, success. Also, it's really turning those uh, individuals that right now do jobs that can be automated and giving them possibility to do something more meaningful. So we are not replacing people, but uh, helping them to really concentrate on jobs that provide more value. So transcribing uh, audio files or giving uh, this kind of keywords to different texts, that's not meaningful job. I'm, right. I'm really, really believing that if it can be automated, it should be automated. We shouldn't hold back if it's easily uh, reproducible by a machine. That's just my own opinion. And I really truly believe if it matches some KPIs, um, the project should be done. But yeah. we always have to have an idea why we do those projects. And I think that people sometimes forget that um, <laughs> during the hype, hype cycle, especially like, let's do that or let's do this. It's really yeah. about what you're trying to achieve and how it can help. For sure. Right, right. So in your in your own work and what you are looking at and the initiatives you're working on, what are some yeah. of the, like, what's your favorite one that's coming down the line in like one to two, let's say actually like three to five years from now that you really think um, will be game changing? Uh, that's, a, that's a hard question. Uh, there are actually uh, many different examples that are, in my opinion, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the latest ones that's going... Um, that we are starting actually uh, really soon is kind of auditing uh, the e-commerce field. So um, European legislation uh, says that the government should uh, make sure that uh, uh, citizens, the private citizens, uh, everyone should be, uh, how to say, take care of the merch, uh, the private company shouldn't take uh, kind of, um, what's the word? They shouldn't manipulate with prices. Okay, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. In the e-commerce field, we yeah. have roughly 5,000 e-shops. It's impossible to see whether, uh, I'm going to give an example, people uh, raise prices and then uh, show a discount if and how the prices move. So right. we have already done kind of a pilot, let's call it. We yeah. find, found out that uh, many, many companies actually um, um, disobeyed the law. They are <laughs> fictionally creating higher prices before uh, showing, uh, for example, Black Friday. So before that, they increased the prices of different products by 30%. Oh, I see. And then, right. So then reducing them 25%. And now you have a feeling that you are, as a, as a customer, saving money. Instead, you might actually be paying even more. Paying more, um, right, right. So, yeah, on uh, the retail side, I can understand how that makes sense because the prices were transparent from the start, but now you're basically marking the price up and then claiming, "Oh, look, we're giving you a big discount." So, yeah, that's. But I, I was thinking about if you're like a right. company, like a big, you know, manufacturing company, and you're going to sell some hard, some hardware, 
then those prices would never be public anyway because it's always commercial deals that are never public. But from a retail perspective or from an e-commerce perspective, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So it yeah. benefits so, the consumer but, to know they're actually paying what they're supposed to pay. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think consumers, uh, through this initiative, they will really feel a huge impact. I'm I'm really I'm really looking forward to the outcome of that project. It would, because it would almost be like when you go to like kayak to book a flight and it says like, you know, this these are the the fares over time and it's showing the up and downs, right? <laughs> and you'd almost be able yeah. to see like, oh look, this is a good time to buy. It's just before Good Friday. It's gonna be or Black Friday, whatever. This is a really good time to buy because after Black Friday, <laughs> the prices always go up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, uh, so kayak. I'm sure they love hearing that one if they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to kayak. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think that's that's just that's just uh, one of the realistic projects that. Uh, that's very really... cool. I really like that. Yeah. I can see a lot uh, of use so, cases for that. Yeah, and it's 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 really about understanding also when it's manipulating with prices or it's uh, just related to your competitor rising the prices and you try to fluctuate so it's it's a more difficult project than uh, it might look out from the mm -hmm. outset sure. um, so uh, that's that's an interesting um, I really do believe that the unemployment agency project is uh, a worthwhile as well um, then uh, from the security side uh, helping just for example our um, coordinators who take the calls, so 911 uh, coordinators, fill in, understand what's the level, uh, what kind of vehicles should be sent to which position. It just helps to speed right. up the whole process and also optimizing the vehicles throughout Estonia. So making sure that people are reached really swiftly. Um, mm -hmm. not, not something unique, but still, it really affects people. So just just uh, some examples but yeah. uh, as, you, as you know we we have done quite a lot already so uh, 18 uh, ai examples right now in the government and uh, counting yeah wow yeah if if people li watching this or listening to this wanted to read more about your ai examples is there a link somewhere they could go or they just google estonia ai um they can type in credit.ee <laughs> I'm I'm going to send you the link okay. so you can uh, put it under one under. <laughs> but uh, we have a government uh, website uh, showcasing what we have done. Also, um, we hope to translate it as well. Right now, cool. just okay. use your preferred uh, translation service and uh, <laughs> yeah. look into that. Well, well, just for the sake of the people who are listening who are on our podcast, do you want to just spell it for us as well? Because then they'll at least hear it and they can make their best attempt to find it. Uh, yeah, uh, K R A T E D dot E E. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Perfect. Thank uh, you. You can try. You can try to find it. Yeah, that works. Um, awesome. Thank you. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's spelled pretty similar to the English version with tip of the C. So we'll be all right. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, definitely check it up. We try to update it as well. Um, by next year, we should have 50, 50 examples in the public sector. Uh, wow. Wow. Hopefully, we'll reach that as well. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I've always said that I've always felt that Estonia as a, as a country has always been very forward thinking in terms of digital. I mean, for me, the e-residency the e program is one of the most visible things out there. But yeah, I mean, we, we've had another project from the show <laughs> called Get Change, which has just issued uh, credit cards based on using credit crypto and cash. Um, yeah. They're working very closely with Estonian regulators. And again, it's just like how easy it is for them to get close to the regulators to build a business is, is amazing to build a digital business. So right. um, I've always kept an eye on it because I've always thought it's very interesting because a lot of countries, it's not that easy to get in front of anybody. I mean... For, for us as being living in the, is living, I live in the UK and Yuri's in the US, for either of us to actually be able to get access to government anything, it's like, we're lucky if the clerk will even talk to us. <laughs> Take a number, honey, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, 
I think that's a good time to also promote that uh, if if someone has an idea, then uh, um, Estonia is a is a great great place to try out uh, new things as well. We are we are quite flexible, as you know. Mm-hmm. Estonia is open for business. Yeah, there and it's digital. It's open for business and <laughs> yeah. digital. So come try out. We have the e-residency. Join. Yeah. Um, get to know the services, how the government functions. Yeah. Best way. Yeah, I've got my e-residency. I got it recently, and <laughs> um, and it is amazing how much you can start to do through a completely digital economy. I mean, truly, the you know. Other than me going to an embassy to pick up my documents, and it was the, probably the nicest embassy I've ever been to in my life. Like, hi, how are you? Nice to see you. We've got your card here. It's great. We've got your name. We know who you are. Just show us your passport. You're on your way. And I thought, wow, they're being so nice to me. What do they want? <laughs> and it was a really great experience, to be honest. So it's um, it's just it's just neat. Yeah, it's really cool to see what you guys are doing, and I love. I just love what you're doing. What you're doing in terms of your role is an interesting role because, um, I mean, I've come from the world of tech my whole life. So, seeing yep. a nation take on digital scientists and trying to build a digital economy and continuing to do it, and having a big vision, is amazing. Um, I guess for you, being only having been there one year, when you joined, what were you expecting when you got there? So, as you know. <laughs> Not not coming from the public sector, you always have a fear that it's uh, it's slower and maybe the motivation and so on. Actually, I was wrong. Um, the team itself, that it's really awesome. Uh, people are actually the inno- innovation that happens is because people are willing to really put in the hours, think, yeah. be creative, and uh, try to be different. And I think that's uh, that's something that. Compared to other other countries I've been living in, uh, that's that was really a game changer. Right. People are people are actually as innovative as active as uh, you would imagine. That's a a great way to to close off the episode with that because that's such an interesting statement. Yuri, do you have any any last thoughts before we go? No, no, no. Thank you so much. This was, this was very informative. Yeah. yeah so th- thank you everybody for for listening. And- subscribing don't forget to hit that little bell on your way out it's been a great pleasure having Albert from the Estonian government or scientist on the show and uh, check us out for future episodes to the moon until next time